This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Hello everyone and welcome to my studio! Well guys, today we're going to continue working on my Halloween special dolls. I've made already the Golden Siren from Jibber doll. Then I've made the Mary Sanderson doll and by this I have completed my collection of Sanderson sisters. And today we're going to make Emily from the Corpse Bride movie by Tim Burton. And if you remember guys, about a year ago I've made already Sally from The Nightmare Before Christmas, also by Tim Burton. By the way, if you've missed that video, it was such a cute doll, it was one of my favorites really. So and today we are going to make Emily and by this we will also complete like a tiny collection of dolls inspired by Tim Burton's movies. Really love Tim Burton, I bet many of you do as well because he's truly amazing. So today it's time to make Emily, I was really looking forward to making this doll, I really love this movie, love this character. So that's why let's keep this intro very short and let's start working because there is a lot of work including some body modifications that make me a little bit nervous. So let's start the transformation, of course guys please don't forget to subscribe to my channel, hit the bell button to get notified about my new doll repaint videos and of course don't forget to support my art here on YouTube with your likes. It's really, really, really important. So, and this being said, let's start working. So guys, this is our future Emily and it was a very easy choice because of this doll's huge eyes, tiny nose and the blue skin tone. I don't know, she's definitely a perfect corpse bride. I will have to replace her hands because one of them is simply missing and another one doesn't really fit the makeover. But I have a bunch of doll body parts so it will not be a problem really. Now let's quickly prepare her for the makeover. Let's undress her, let's cut her hair off and let's remove her makeup with pure acetone. has dark blue hair so I think this is going to be a good match it looks very similar to the original very pretty dark blue hair so now let's paint her head with blue acrylics and then I will give her this new blue hair using my rerouting tool This is the result of my rerouting a couple of hours later, yeah everything looks good so let's add some glue inside of the head to fix the new hair and then I will let it dry for a couple of days. Mm -hmm. 
When the glue becomes dry, I spray her face with Mr. Super Clear sealant. It will make the surface really matte. And then I can start drawing using watercolor pencils and soft pastels. So Emily has huge eyes with tiny black irises, uh, pretty thin eyebrows, and she also has bright pink lips. So this is exactly what I'm trying to create right now. Emily has a couple of damaged areas on her face because you know she's kind of decaying. <laughs> so on one cheek you can literally see her teeth through the hole in her soft tissues. And on another cheek and also on the forehead she also has some black decaying areas. So I need to recreate it all as well. Okay guys, this is the face, now I'm going to put it aside for a while and I'm going to start working on her body because she requires some serious body modifications. If you remember, Emily's left arm and her right leg are just bones, like a skeleton. So I will start with cutting out the middle parts of her upper and lower arm and also the middle parts of her upper and lower leg. Like basically I want to keep just the original joints and all the rest I'm just removing.
So something like this, this is what I've got, you see, and now I'm going to attach an imitation of these bones made out of Q-tips, barbecue sticks, warbler thermoplastic, and I'm going to connect these bones to the joints. So this is how it looks so far, yeah, not bad at all. Now let's also make a hole in her rib area and a couple of ribs sticking out of it. So now I can paint it all white and then I will blush the whole body with soft pastels. This is how the modified body looks when everything is finished and painted, you know, I was really worried about this step, but everything looks really good so far, the joints work, the knees and elbows and the hands are bending, so everything is going really good so far. Now let's make Emily's outfit, this kind of half rotten wedding dress that used to be really beautiful when she was alive, but now it all looks really old, grayish, kind of blue and it's all just not so fresh in general, let's be honest. So yeah, it's a corpse bride's wedding dress. And I'm going to start with making a corset out of warbler thermoplastic.
When the base of the corset is finished, I'm attaching a piece of lace to it to create a pretty texture. The next day everything looks dry and really beautiful, check it out, I really love this corset so far. So right now I'm going to cut off a piece of an old beauty blender, I can tell you this beauty blender lives a long and interesting life, really. And I will apply some blue and grey and even a little bit of black paint to the edges of the corset. how the finished corset looks, check it out, it's very cute, I think I really love making corsets out of warbler, it's always kind of interesting. So now let's make a skirt and Emily has this long grayish skirt that is more dark on the bottom and it's also decorated with those kind of flower stems or how to call these things on the bottom part of the skirt. So I'm going to use this white fabric for it, I already cut out a skirt pattern. And now we're going to dye this fabric. So I fill this glass container with boiling water. Hello guys, can you see me? So and now I'm going to mix two colors of reed dye for synthetic fibers and I will mix this pretty light gray color with this light blue. And then I will submerge the fabric there.
not sure if you can really see it on camera, but it's got this very light gray blue tint. Very pretty. So now let's repeat the hot water trick from the beginning. And this time I will add this dark graphite dye to the water. And I will submerge just the bottom of the skirt. Check it out, check it out guys, it's still wet, it will become lighter once the fabric dries completely. But the gradient and the colors, they look really good to me, I feel very happy with the result. And this is how it looks when the fabric dried, really cool, very pretty grey color, I'm very happy with the end result of this fabric dyeing process. So now I will take this special contour product and I'm going to mix it with a drop of black silk paint and with this mix I'm going to paint those flower stems on. And this contouring effects product is very thick and it really lets me paint a straight thin line on fabric without bleeding, you know, otherwise if you use a regular paint without any special thicker product mixed in, this paint would immediately start bleeding literally in all directions. So this is what I've got as a result of my dyeing and painting, spent all day, the whole Friday doing it. But I think it looks really amazing. So now I will just turn in the bottom really quickly, gather the waistline and we're done with the skirt. This is how it looks guys, I don't know, I'm very happy about the end result, it really looks like the Emily's dress and it was really interesting to make it, so I'm very happy. Now I still need to make the headband with the veil to complete the outfit, but I think I want to style her hair first to be able to see how this headband really fits. So let's give our Emily some elegant wavy hair. is the finished hair. I don't know, I think she looks really stunning. I really love this doll, love her hair. So now let's make a headband and I start with making a base out of Warbler Thermoplastic. Then I'm going to decorate the headband with these tiny dry flowers, I think they're perfect for this look. I'm painting the doll with black acrylics. Now I just need to attach a veil to the back of the headband and we're done with it. And I'm going to mix white and grey veils for it, I think it will look kind of more interesting. And 
this is how the finished headband with the veil looks. I think it's pretty close to what Emily wears in the movie and it looks really good on the doll. So, now I still need to make a pair of white shoes for her out of Warbler Thermoplastic and she wears yeah, just classic white shoes, nothing really too special. These are the finished shoes, you can see that I have completed the look with a pair of blue socks and I've also added a pair of grey gloves. So now I think we're done with the outfit, finally. I still want to give her flowers because Emily has a bridal bouquet, so I made something like this out of dry flowers. And then after attaching false lashes and adding gloss to her eyes and lips, we will be able to take a look at the end result pictures. Guys, here is finally my Emily, the corpse bride, and she looks so sad and so beautiful at the same time that I really want to give her a hug. I don't know, I'm very happy with the way she turned out because she really looks like a zombie bride, but she stays very beautiful and very touching at the same time, and she also really looks like Emily from the movie, so I feel very, very, very satisfied. I don't know, all my Halloween specials have been really satisfying and bringing me a lot of pleasure this year. This time I had a lot of fun working on her corset and also dyeing her skirt. I don't do this fabric dyeing that often, so it was an interesting experience. Her skeleton arm and leg gave me honestly the biggest worries this time, but it looks really good in the end, so I'm also very happy. And I don't really feel that she looks too much like my Sally doll that I've made a year ago, also on the base of a Laguna Blue doll. They're definitely different girls with different characters, with different stories. So guys, and what do you think about this doll, about this makeover? Who do you like more, Sally or Emily? If you watched both of my videos, which doll do you prefer? It would be really interesting for me to know. Yeah, and this doll is now available on eBay for three days until Monday. The link is in the description box under this video, so please check it out if you are interested. And before I finish this week's episode, I want to thank our sponsor, Squarespace, a beautiful and powerful website building platform. You know, guys, I've been making dolls here on YouTube already for six years, but strangely enough, I still don't have a website. I don't know, this is ridiculous. I don't even have an online portfolio with my dolls. Really, I don't know how do you run an online business without a website in 2022. Of course, making my own website was on my list since the day one. Really, I've been paying for my domain name poponatalia.com for six years just to like reserve it, hold it for myself. 
But I couldn't start really working on the website itself because I thought it would be probably too complicated for myself to make it on my own. I don't really have any website building experience and I didn't really want to hire anyone because I thought that it might be a little bit too expensive. But today guys I'm really happy to announce that my website is finally in the making thanks to Squarespace. The first thing that I want to admit is that the platform is really easy to use. I'm working on the website completely on my own and I've got really zero difficulties with it so far. Everything is very easy, there are lots of beautiful modern templates to choose from in their catalog, so I'm having a lot of fun right now working on my website design. But it's not just about the design, of course, the most important thing is functionality. And Squarespace has it all. You can create your own online store and earn money selling your own products, including, for example, digital art, dolls, whatever, prints, books, whatever you want. You can also create a gated members-only content for your audience, and it means, spoiler alert, guys, that soon I will be able to launch my own doll classes through my own website. I don't know, it has been my dream for years, literally for years. Squarespace gives you all the tools to manage your members, to send email communications, and leverage audience insights, and all in one easy-to-use platform. So, when my website is finished, I will be able to create a community there with a fully integrated commenting system that supports threaded comments, replies and likes. Plus, they have really powerful blogging tools to categorize, share and schedule your posts too. And if you suddenly need even more functionality, you can extend Squarespace already powerful e-commerce capabilities with Squarespace extensions. These new third-party tools can help you manage your inventory, promote products, streamline bookkeeping, reconcile and file sales tax, and ship items across the globe. So if you're like me and you have been thinking about creating your own website already for years, you can try Squarespace completely for free. Go to squarespace.com for a free trial and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash P-A-D-A-S, that stands for Papa Natalia Dollar Studio, to save 10% of your first purchase of a website or domain. So thank you so much Squarespace for sponsoring this episode and also for being amazing and I will keep you updated guys on my website journey I can promise you there are exciting things are coming up in the near future so and that was my doll transformation of the week I really hope you've enjoyed it today and if so guys please don't forget to support my art here on YouTube with your likes of course subscribe to my channel hit the bell button to get notified about my new dollar paint videos and I will see you very soon don't know yet maybe the next week Friday maybe in two weeks still trying trying to squeeze three dolls in a row till the end of October October, but not sure if it's gonna go so guys love you have a nice weekend bye